Hey guys, welcome to the next session in my Swift beginner course. In this session, we are going to learn about automatic reference counting and then scopes. Um, so we are almost covering up the basics of Swift and I'm hopefully uh, doing a one, one another session in which we will be covering up the um, oops concepts. Um, and with that, we will wind up the Swift basics and then uh, we will start to learn uh, iOS. So let's jump into the topic automatic reference counting, right? So as the name denotes something is being counted automatically, right? What is that reference? So what is the reference? Before we learn about that, we should be knowing how generally a software being executed, right? So let's say we have a mobile and um, we say that we have 4 GB of RAM and then when you take iPhones, we have uh, A14, A12, Bionic chips and all, right? So let's take a, a laptop. So when you buy a laptop, we uh, we check for the specifications like 4 GB RAM, i5 processor, all those stuffs, right? So what is, what are all these things? So generally RAM is it's a temporary memory when you execute some programs like those programs will be uh, stored in that um, the, the whatever variable you try to initialize the memory for those variables constants whatever will be uh, I mean allocated at a specific uh, point in that uh, random access memory and what is the processor so it, it tries to fetch the instruction set from the uh, uh, hard drive and then converts it to the signal and then executes it right so that's why so so RAM is just to store the uh, temporary memory whereas the, the the speed of the mobile depends on the processor right so let's be clear on that okay whatever variable you you try to declare initialize everything being stored in the RAM right so like let's say we have a 4 GB of RAM and in your application if I mean you keep on initializing lot of lot and lot of variables okay assume that uh, each variable takes 1 MB Okay, I mean that's not the uh, real-time example. I'm just telling you for uh, for one scenario. Assume that your uh, your the variable which you declare takes one MB of memory in your RAM, and your your total RAM size is assume that totally 10 MB. So when you declare totally 10 different variables which each takes one MB, then your your RAM is filled, right? So you won't be able to uh, allocate memory for any other uh, variables after that. So so this is how generally mobile uh, the operating system also works like when you try to initialize variables some certain amount of memory uh, is being allocated in the uh, in the ram and the when when you are not using a variable when you are not using a variable that particular memory has to be cleared like freed from the mem ram right so that so that you you will keep on recycling the memory so that you can try to uh, uh, initialize i mean as you move from screens to screen or as you uh, initialize lot and lot of variables i mean the memory will be allocated for them uh, one example I will tell you let's say we all use uh, I mean Android or iOS mobile whatever right so assume that I mean you, you keep on opening lot and lot of application so you open one application minimize it don't kill it minimize it you open another application so like this you keep on open uh, like 20 applications when you go to the multitasking and then when you choose one any of the application sometimes you might have noticed that application is being restarted right that is because the the it got mem i mean the operating system killed that application to free the memory so that it can allocate that freed memory for someone who needs it right so so what i am trying to say is at some point of time when the operating system decides uh, that it needs some memory it will it will clear the memory which are, which are not being used okay so assume that um, let a equal to 5 so when I say this assume that the operating system allocated um, 1 KB of memory for this one and let's say this a is getting killed like we are not using then this 1 KB 
memory 0x 0x 1 2 3 4 5 whatever this particular memory has to be freed right so then only this particular point of memory can be allocated for some other instances when you declare but the the system just cannot go and free the memory right because your your application the system needs to know what are all the variables you need access to it later also so the system should not free the memory of a property or constant whatever which you will be using it in the later point of time so then on what basis the system tries to free the uh, memory right so that's where the automatic reference counting comes so what it means is i mean generally uh, in swift uses this arc and how it works is whenever you declare a variable a reference count of that particular variable will be incremented by 1 so assume that in this case a has a reference count of 1 okay right and now let's say let b equal to a in this case b's memory also being pointed to a so assume that now a has a reference count of 2 right so this is how the reference count gets incremented and whenever a reference count of a property gets to 0 okay when reference count becomes 0 then memory gets freed this is how the memory recycling happens in swift so scopes are nothing but access i mean providing access like let's say i am going to declare a struct and it's going to be machine and it's going to have a property called var name string okay so you see that we are just declaring it as a var name right so by default the access specifier for properties which you declare in swift are internal right so when you say internal by default the internal is the access specifier in swift so which means this struct like you you can access this name property in the whole module wherever you try to create a object for this machine okay but assume that i i have a so by since this is a default one we don't have to mark it as a internal one and assume that we want to restrict access to some properties uh, let's say this machine has a, a secret um, password so we should not be accessed uh, by anyone out there so in that case we have to protect it right no one should be able to access that password property only this machine should be able to access it right i mean like within the machine so in that case what we have to do is usually what we will do where password equal to string right this is how we used to declare but when you try to do it in this way what will happen is let struct sorry let machine equal to machine name and pg 1 2 3 4 5 this is the password and so you created this password when you when you uh, like you, you created this password when you try to initialize this machine object and now print machine dot password like literally this i mean we are trying to access the password out of this struct 
right like outside the struct we are trying to access the password which is wrong which is uh, which is not secure so we need to protect it so to do that what we have to do we have to mark this pro particular property as a private one so when you mark a property as a private one you will not be able to I mean you will not be able to access it from outside the class okay so here we need to remove that so what we have to do machine dot name equal to pj and then since this password is a private one you will not be able to access it let's see password is inaccessible due to private protection level and also since this machine is a let one and it's a struct we will not be able to use let right so we need to mark it as a var and this one is not allowed great now what we have to do like func print password print password so this particular password property will be able to access only within this struct not outside the struct okay so so this one is private this is the purpose of private and by default internal we have one more stuff here public let's say that you are writing a library which is a module right and someone out there want to use your library which is outside your outside of your module so as we know whatever property you declare in a class or struct those are all has internal access specifier right but when you want to give access to a property or a class or a method whatever outside of a module you have to mark that one as a public so in case if you want to give access to this struct outside of your module then you need to mark it as a public struct and the same okay and then public so in this way you will be able to create a machine object outside of your module okay so these are all the basic access specifiers which you should be knowing uh, before you jump into the uh, iOS stuff so you will be able to access internal within the module public within the module and then outside of module private within that particular class itself class or struct whatever so we have internal within the declared module public everywhere within module outside module and private only within the class or struct where it's declared okay so this is called scopes so I hope you have liked this video to understand about the automatic reference counting and then scopes in Swift. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down this video so that you can stay up to date with the future one. Thank you.